you guys i have a new video idea a new idea a new sense of inspiration so check this out <clears throat> so if we think about how pro level or professional or people are the highest achievers the highest level of achievement how did they get there right how did they achieve at the highest level well think about it recently um I have been studying like the psychology of video games and how professionals are able to get to that professional level. There's a small distinction between an average player and a pro level player, right? And how I've come to terms with it is I'm calling it, and I'm making this rule up myself, is the 100 times rule. Let's say um, there's someone who wants to master a skill, like drawing, playing tennis, um, playing video game If you want to learn how to do something and get so good at it is to do it a hundred times playing French horn uh, I probably played the B flat major scale over a hundred times because it's the easiest scale. What about the A major scale? I haven't played that a hundred times because it's hard um, What about the G flat major scale that one's a hard one, too. I haven't played it a hundred times so That's why it's hard for me for beatboxing I've done the kick drum, the K snare, the lip rolls, over a hundred times, over thousands of times, probably tens of thousands of times, who knows, but that is why I'm getting so good at it. Um, Serena Williams, she's probably hit over hundreds of thousands of tennis balls. She didn't get to the pro level, she didn't get all the awards, she didn't get number one tennis spot, uh, female tennis player, by hitting a tennis ball ten times. Not a hundred times, probably hundreds of thousands of times she hit that tennis ball over and over and over again. The hundred times rule, this is how professionals get to their level, get to their massive, insane skill. Michael Phelps probably swam hundreds of thousands of laps. Who knows how many laps this man has swam? He's gotten over, what, 28 gold medal, 28 medals? Um, pro level gamers. In terms of fundamentals, learning how to shoot, uh, uh, learning, learning how to shoot an FPS game, doing the drill over and over and over again to practice the recoil, to practice the flick shots, whatever the case may be. Uh, musicians, people at the highest level, the musicians that play at Disney, the musicians that play at Warner Bros, at um, 20th Century Studios, whatever the musicians are, they didn't get there just because they got there. They got there because they played the same thing hundreds of times. They played a G major scale hundreds of times. They they held out long tones for hundreds of hours. I'm talking about the pro pro, the highest level of achievers, put hundreds of hours. The, 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 the same thing, hundreds of times, fundamentals, thousands of times, a hundred who knows how many times, just beyond belief, the repetition, the discipline, the fact that they did it over and over and over and over again to get to that high level achieving level. Now now I'm 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 curious to know. We've talked about breaking out of the comfort zone. We've talked about breaking your limits. We've talked about um, all these life skills, lifestyles. The challenge for myself, the challenge for you, the challenge for everybody now is: imagine this. All right, imagine if you are a drawer. Imagine if you're an artist. Right? Oh, I'm not that good. Um, you know, I'm scared to put my art out there. I, I don't know how to get better. I don't know how to improve my skills. Just think for a second. Imagine the difference. Imagine how much progress you make. Imagine if you were, if you drew. Imagine if you were able to create a hundred pieces of art. From the first piece of art to the 100th piece of art. If you were to make a hundred pieces of art. Imagine the amount of progress. Imagine the level. Imagine the skill you would be at by the 100th piece of art. This is the rule I'm making up for myself right now. It is the 100th or well, the 100 times rule. If you want to get good at something, we need to do it 100 times. Hundreds of times. This is concept of goal setting. Concept of... Uh, High intensity interval training. If you know H A I T is a workout um, sort of thing where people use it to exercise, where they do high intensity and then take a small break. High intensity, take a small break. I've taken this into an account of how I work. So for homework, I go really hard for thirty minutes, take a three minute break. 
go away for 30 minutes, take a three minute break. When I'm working on something else, um, if I'm um, practicing my instrument, or if I'm working on studying or working out, right? Or really hard for 30 seconds, take a 30 second break. Or really hard for 30 seconds, take a 30 second break for music. Um, practice for five minutes, take a one minute break. So that way I'm going really, really focused for that duration of time by taking a break. And I thought about this, okay? And I was like, this is how I've kind of been functioning for a while, but I haven't had a real incentive. So for me, it was, I'm just gonna do this H-I-I-T type of working. Work really hard for five minutes, take a one minute break. Work really hard for five minutes, take a one minute break. But it would be infinite, it would be indefinite. I wouldn't have a set goal or a set thing to do. I would just do it because I knew that, okay, if I put the time and put the hours in, over time, I will get better results. But now, now, after taking this course about the psychology of gaming, they talk so much about motivation and setting goals for yourself that he's making me realize, holy cow, look at the results, look at the possibilities of goal setting. So the goal I set for myself today was doing a drill a hundred times. I won the fifth time, and I had to go 94 more time, 95 more times. And I feel like this is amazing. It's effortless motivation because I know once I get to that 100th time, once I pass my goal, pass that threshold, the results are going to be enormous. The results are going to be through the roof. So what I'm saying is this, whether it's a sport, tennis, soccer, basketball, baseball, doing the same drill hundreds of times, number one. Number two, working really, 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 really hard doing many, many sprints, right? Mark Kwan, again, from Barbara Brigade, talked about doing many sprints where for sprinters, I'm not a sprinter, but the way he broke it down is when you run really, really, really fast for a minute and then take a two minute break, he actually is getting more results from that versus running a 30 minute um, jog for working at school rather than working for three hours and getting the same amount of work done that you could have gotten in an hour and a half, right? So like this, when you work for three hours, you work on fatigue. For the first half hour, you're okay, and then you get tired and fatigued, and then you start procrastinate, you're not very focused, things get rough. But if you work for 30 minutes, take a three-minute break, work for 30 minutes, take a three-minute break, and in that three-minute break, you're not just living, you're like stretching, drinking water, uh, doing a little bit of loosening up, stretching, those three minutes are very useful because you work hard for 30 minutes, take a three minute break, work hard for 30 minutes, take a three minute break, work hard for 30 minutes, and then take a three minute break. By doing this, you are so focused for three minutes that you get the same amount of work done in an hour and a half that you would have done in three hours. Number two. So number one was doing, um, what was number one? Number one was doing the same thing hundreds of times. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Number two is high intensity interval training. Working really hard for a set duration amount of time and giving yourself a break, taking an intentional, intentional break. Number three, number four, number three, oh my God. Number three is visualization. So basically what I'm saying right now, I'm breaking all this down, is how to master any skill. Number one is to do it hundreds, repetition, hundreds, hundreds of thousands of times. Number two is working really, really hard for a set duration amount of time and taking an intentional break. Number three is visualization. So let me, let me break this down into easy steps. Let me backtrack a bit, right? Have you ever had a moment where you were so blissful, so happy at the end of a football game, at the end of a marching band performance, at the end of a ice skating uh, competition, at the end of a, gaming, of a gaming tournament, at the end of a tennis tournament, or that moment where you just put the last finishing touches on your painting and you step back and you feel this immense bliss. You just won the game. You hit the last touchdown. Uh, you hit the last tennis racket, the tennis ball. You get the last score when, um, 
for my shaman, you play your last cutoff for a painting. You work on this painting for the past three weeks and you put the last thing touches on and in your mind you're like, oh my goodness, I overcame this. I'm so exhausted. I'm going to pass out. I'm thirsty. I'm hungry. I haven't taken a shower today and I'm sweating and I'm disgusting and smelly. But you're on top of the world. You are so, so blissful, so amazingly happy. Now with this, with this in mind, when I say visualization, what I'm saying is close your eyes, right? We close your eyes and we picture and we imagine ourselves in that situation, smiling, blissful, just full of this gleaming, benign, infinite amount of energy. And it's so beautiful. It, that, that is the feeling. That is the reason why we're human, the reason why we're alive that feeling is addicting. That is what we want to achieve. If we were to live, live our life and have that feeling every day, could you imagine how amazing our lives would be? How rich, how emotionally intense, how passion, full of it. So when you visualize and put yourself in that moment, what I'm saying is this is an exercise to put ourselves in a heightened state of mind. And at the same time, it's an exercise to practice the concept of visualization. So to master any skill, number one, I said it was to do the repetition hundreds and hundreds of thousands of times. Number two was to work really, really hard for a certain amount of period of time and then take an intentional break with a certain amount of period of time. But number three is visualization. Well, Sean, tell us, what is it? What are you trying to get at? What I'm trying to get at is this. Ed Milet. He's an amazing entrepreneur, high levels performer, Ed Milet. Look him up. And he talks about visualization and the power of it. Our subconscious mind, our subconscious mind does not know the difference of an event that actually happened versus an event that was imagined, visualized, or thought up and created pictures in our, in our mind. So how does this relate to getting better at a skill? Well, think about this. Let's say that right now, me personally, I want to get into fitness. I've never benched before. I've never squatted with weights on my back before. And I've never deadlifted before. There's no way, there's no way that in a couple of months I would be a master at it. There's no way. There's no way. I didn't, because I could not have gone through that many reps hundreds and hundreds of times. I could put in the work in and put a set amount of time for me to do the work and then take a break. But what's going to help me boost my progress at getting better at bench, squat, and deadlift is this power visualization. So what I can do, and break it down so, so much. So check this out. I'm going to break it down with two examples. Example number one is Ed Mild, when he was in college, he... Um, uh, uh, when the pitcher pitched the ball, the ball hit him in the calf and a tumor formed on his calf. So he had to get surgery to remove the tumor. So he was not able to play for six months because he did get surgery and it took time to heal. At Milet, at BP, batting practice, he couldn't practice because his, right, because his calf was uh, not working correctly. So his college uh, psychologist and most college psychologists at that time when he was in college didn't have um, sports psychologists brought him over and sat him down. He said, Ed Milet. He said, Ed, Eddie, Eddie, come, come sit down. Let me talk to you for a bit. He was like, all right, what's going on? And the psychologist said, I want you to visualize the ball. And Milet was like, what do you mean? And then... The psychologist said, well, where's the camera? Is it center field? Is it from the stadium? Is it from the top? Is that a 45 degree angle? Is that a 37 degree angle? Where's the camera? All right, and Ed Milet said, okay, it's uh, center field, down the line. He said, oh, okay. Um, he said, now, Ed, Eddie, I want you to visualize this. What hand is the picture? He said, I don't know, right-handed. All right, so pitcher's right-handed, camera is center field. Now, I know this is crazy. You guys are like, what is Sean getting at? 
just hang in there. By the end of this, this will blow your mind. All right, check this out. So, picture is right-handed, camera, center field, and the psychologist is an idiot. Now, I want you to break it down so slowly. Break it down to where he could just see the ball, the release point from the ball. The release point from the pitcher's hand, the ball, when the ball was rotating, leaving out of the pitcher's hand. And he broke it down so slowly that he could count the number of stitches on the baseball. He could imagine and visualize the bat in the box at the same exact location every single time when the bat would hit the ball, the rotation of the ball, the number of stitches in the ball, the trajectory of the ball going every single time. Now, Eddie did this for the next six months, and when he went back to batting practice... Now, th think about this, okay? So, freshman year, Eddie, he hit an average of uh, 0.287, or 0 0.237, I believe what he said. That's pretty average for a freshman in college. But sophomore year, when he came back after the tumor, he led the nation in batting. The psychologist told Eddie, now Eddie, why do you think this happened? Line drive up the middle, line drive up the middle, line drive up the middle. Eddie could not miss. He couldn't miss. The psychologist said, Eddie, why do you think this happened? Why? Because you didn't miss a single day of batting practice. The subconscious mind doesn't know the difference of an event that actually happened versus a visualized event. Okay? So how does this have to deal with me benching, deadlifting, and squatting? Well, think about this. I could break it down so, so specifically. People think they visualize. People think they set uh, pictures in their mind, images, and see images clearly. But the highest, highest level performers visualize so much more specifically. So for me, I can literally visualize and feel, feel the iron in my fist, the little end grains on the pieces of metal, right? I can hear, I can literally hear the metal crinkling. Crinkling, that little crinkle of the metal, right? I can feel the weight of the bar on my shoulder as I'm getting ready to squat. I can feel myself trying to pull it over as if I'm trying to curve the bar over my shoulder. I can break it down so, so much that I could even memorize the feeling of my feet planked in the ground. What kind of shoes I'm wearing? What's underneath? Is it gravel? Is it rubber? What's my floor? Is it concrete? I could listen to the sounds from the back, to hear the echo of the people around me, their voices. Could feel the sweat on my brow, to hear my own breath, to put myself in that moment so, so specifically, to the point that I can even know the pace that I'm breathing, the little end grains of the metal, the feeling of the weight on my back, the feeling of my feet, the formation, the feeling of my neck, the feeling of my shoulder, the feeling of my knees, every little ounce I can visualize. And what this does, the subconscious mind does not know the difference of an event that actually happened versus an event visualized. I can anchor the feeling in my body and I am working, I am creating progress without even touching a bar. So that when I go to the bar, I have already been practicing the bar the night before when I was sleeping in bed, when I was laying there. That is extra repetition, extra hours. Now when you anchor it in your body, when you go to the actual event, you're like, oh, this is so much easier. I did this last night. You didn't even move from your bed, but you did it last night subconsciously. So when you go to do the task, you've already bypassed the learning curve. You've already bypassed getting used to it. You've already bypassed the fact that Oh, is this right? Um, I don't know how this should feel. You've broken every sing we've broken every single aspect to its absolute tiniest, smallest details. Now, I've done this for music too, for playing French horn. One of my goals is to play on a big stage in front of lots of people. I visualize myself standing up there, breathing, feeling the metal on my mouthpiece, the air vent from the top of the roof, someone coughing in the audience, the conductor next to me getting ready to cue 
the ensemble behind me. I can feel my shoes, feel my shoulders, the weight of the horn, my fingers playing the entire concerto. I visualize it so, so well that when the event actually happens, I won't be that nervous because it already happened. I won't be as anxious, like, oh my goodness, I'm nervous, this is my first performance. I will be less prone to, oh my goodness, I'm scared, oh my goodness, I'm fearful of what's gonna happen. I already went through the event, it already happened. Now we're just doing it again. So that is the power of visualization. And if any of you know, um, Tony Gonzalez, he was a recent Hall of Famer for the NFL. He talks about visualization as well. And think about this, all right? The NFL players are the pro-level players of football in the nation. And this is how he visualized. And this is to make sure, he said, that it will happen the exact way that you planned. So this is what we did. He would break down every single play to when he would say, ready? And then when the ball snaps, he could visualize the wide receiver. He could visualize the defense. He could visualize the audience, the crowd. Visualize everything. And play by play, second by second, he would break it down. I'm going to take the ball. I'm going to scan the area. I'm going to see my target. Exactly, exactly where the target will be. And my body, I can feel the body in my shoulder, the ball in my hand, the pigskin, the little details on the rubber of the football. I can feel my, my feet shuffling. I can hear the defense in front of me. I can hear everything like a machine, a step-by-step, -step, one plus one process. He breaks it down. He sees the wide receiver. He feels his shoulder. He feels the weight of the ball, and he throws it. But it's perfect every time. The play happens exactly as he planned out. The wide receiver catches the ball. They get a 20-yard advance, and then the defensive side blocks them. That's a 20-yard advance right there that he planned out in his mind. Now, the question is, okay, why is this so important? Well, think about this. For him, for Tony Gonzalez, these are his words. He said, every play happened just as we planned it. Every play that I made, every play that we visualized, every play that we made happened just as it was planned. Now, how, how is this possible? You can't predict what the other team is going to do. You can't predict what the outcome of um, doing something 100 times is going to be. You can't predict the outcome of working really hard and then taking a small intentional break. You can't predict the outcome. You cannot predict the outcome, but what you can do is visualize the outcome. Now, it's this, it's this weird thing where it's like, you can't predict it, but then again, at the same time, you can. You can predict it by visualizing it, because when you visualize it, it happened already, meaning that you can happen, have it happen again so you can't predict. Does that mean that Tony Gonzalez is a, a, um, a, a fortune teller? Maybe he is. Maybe he predicted the fact that he's going to do this play and it happened exactly because he visualized it so well. Maybe he's a fortune teller. You never know. Technically, we're all fortune tellers in some way if we can visualize it. And it happens if we, the way we visualized it. Now, the point that I want to um, show all of you is that, and that the difference from an average performer to a pro level, highest, highest level performer, at the superiority of the highest level of achievers is this level of work, this level of commitment, level of motivation, level of effortless effort. There's a recent study from psychology that talked about the science of motivation and for motivation um, there was a study where they had a group of college students who read an article about a mathematician who came from nothing he grew up in poverty um, he worked really hard to get to college and he became a well-renowned mathematician and they read the article and they had to solve 
a nearly impossible, if not impossible, math equation. Subconsciously, they were able to try 20% harder versus the other group that did not read the article tried, they were the control article, they, they were the control group that tried the, just the normal amount. And so with that being said, this theory of motivation, 20% of it in our subconscious mind comes from the fact that, oh man, I can get to that masterful level, as the same as that mathematician that came from nothing. I can get to the masterful level. And that motivates us 20% more. However, there was a different study where they compared a group where they would master a skill with just that motivation of 20% versus another group who had a team, friends who had a community to help them. Now what happened with that community is the individuals were able to motivate themselves 68% more when trying to learn a skill. So couple the 20% extra motivation by wanting to achieve mastery plus the 68% of a community, you're talking about 88% motivation. Plus putting in hundreds and hundreds of repetition and hours. Hundreds and hundreds of times, if not hundreds of thousands of times. Plus putting in uh, HIIT method of work. Plus putting in the power of visualization. Holy sh... Anything's possible. We can achieve anything we want. Are you kidding me? Right? So, um... Whatever you guys take from this video, if there's one thing you can understand, it is the level and level of work and skill that the pro level, highest level achievers perform at. And just as a reminder, um, my name is Sean Chung Lee. You've been here before. Welcome back. And if you're new, welcome to the family. As of always, everyone, um, take care and keep it real. I would say during these times, I want you guys to stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Um, drink lots of water, and yeah, this was a good. This was this was a packful video. So, hope you guys take care. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye.